TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Now let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, shout out to the first responders, man. Y'all in here. Appreciate y'all for coming. You know what I'm saying? When y'all hit that like button, we're talking about the first responders now. Don't take credit if you ain't the first responder, but anybody hitting the like button, it's a plus. But the first responders hitting the like button makes a difference. <laughs> uh, what was I going to say, man? If you're looking for any of my old videos, they are over here on the Facebook. Don't forget we are partnering with the Blueprint. This is the newest round table brand new there i am right there it is mr god damn it if you're in the hellcats and and anything mopar you know who he is then and you know th this was funny i ain't even gonna lie this guy um and don't forget man we do have patreon all the links to this stuff is down below man let's get into this man if you can't pay we'll take it away season one episode two First of all, let me fix my camera because this is, I just knocked it down before I came. So, not, uh, there we, there we, the Super Bowl is on right now. <laughs> you think I give up? Could care less. Anyway, let's get into it. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Today is going to be like the Super Bowl for some of y'all. I'm dropping banger after banger after banger. Why what happens this? when you get into debt? That's your name. It's not my name. And you can't see it. And the people are paying. One. The number of tenants falling behind on their rent has more than doubled, according to a leading debt charity. The Money Advice Trust says that over half of all the calls they receive are about rent arrears and that missed payments are now the fastest growing debt problem in the UK. Hey, I didn't say nothing about that, my guy. I'm five days late on my rent. <laughs> hey, it get like that, don't it? True. Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are enforcement officers. Their patch covers the busy southeast region of England. They're part of an elite group whose sole aim is to hunt down debts from those who can't pay. We've got two weeks to move it. There is no notice given. And those who won't pay. And the law never said this one. Even if it's this a law, this is cruel law. The law is the law and we're here to enforce it. With the authority of the High Court, they have more power than bailiffs and repo men. Not only can they take your possessions, they can also evict you from- Are they gonna tell us who they are every episode? We know this already. From your house, if you don't pay on time. Contact me if there's a problem. Won't be a problem. The first indication to them that there's a problem is when we knock on the door. Until then, the situation has been letters which they can ignore and lie unopened on the on the post shelf, if you like, uh, or they don't take the phone calls. So they think it's all gone away until we turn up. It's late afternoon in the week before Christmas. Paul and Steve are on their way to repossess a house in... Don't come to my door. I got you this week. ...London's East End. They're evicting a family from their rented home after they ignored the end of their lease. That was six months ago. What's more... See, now that's OD, like... You squatting for six months? Are you even paying still? Well, they still owe over three thousand pounds. Yeah, see, nah, nah come get it. Pounds <laughs> in rent. Oh, it looks grey. It looks like rain. But with Paul and Steve's arrival, their time is definitely up. I don't know. It looks quite nice over here. Look, nice little doll's houses. Oh, it's this one in the corner. I remember looking on Google Earth, and there's someone in. The sheriff's aim is to get them out in two hours. But sometimes it's not that straightforward. Someone in one? the kitchen, we're coming. Oh, no, we didn't see this. Hi, is this your name? No. Well, the situation is that we have come to repossess the property. I go. So you have to go? You can't, they just went to the house. The man is a relative of the female tenant on the writ. She's not at home. 
we have a repossession to take the property back today. I don't know why you're saying coming with a letter saying that we need to move. Yes. No one being to court telling us everything. For our visit today. Yeah. That's a shame, man. A lot of people be <laughs> misinformed. You knew them phone calls was for you. You knew you was missing them. You knew you that ignore button the mug, ain't it? He was ignored. You would not be told. For your visit. Yeah, you would not no, be told about us. Even have a letter saying that we need to leave. We were talking like didn't give a date when we gotta leave, so doesn't make sense to me, you know? The eviction is not easy. It says here nobody turned up at the county court. You can't take nobody turn up. Yeah. We didn't even have a letter. So I'm saying But there's two, there's, there's two or three sets of paperwork, sir. The county court post out a letter and the landlord serves a notice <laughs> and you're saying you've never heard anything at all about it. So all these landlords are obviously lying and the county court's not sending the notices out or and I heaven forbid this thought that the tenant could be lying and they have had the notices and they've chosen to ignore it. I know that sounds really unlikely, but I am led to believe that. As a tenant who ignore, as a, as a person who ignores notices, we be getting them. <laughs> I, got, I got it. Am I going to answer? Nah. nah, I already answered that. I replied. When it comes to living, your living situations, like, you don't play with them too much. You know what I'm saying? I had an extra little fee on mine, so I was like, hold on, what's, why? So, they don't let you pay in portions. Like, you got to pay it all at once, so it is what it is. You're going to wait then. Possibility could be the case. As High Court Enforcement Officers, Paul and Steve can break into the property but they're choosing negotiation over brute force. Ain't no, ain't With no negotiating. the man denying all knowledge of the eviction, they're hoping the landlord's agents can help them out. Why are they being evicted? Is it rent arrears or something? Is it an end of term tenancy then? They've come to the end of the tenancy. For enforcement officers, time is money and they want to get the family out before nightfall. Thanks very much. I'd never have believed that. They were served the eviction notices six months ago. And the agents have been in constant contact with them and they've just refused to go. Oh, it's just amazing. Armed with more information... That is a super right there, an Eton super. Paul decides to apply more pressure on the tenants. I've just spoken to the agent. He said the, the end of tenancy notices were served six months ago. So they gave you two months, or gave the lady, two months notice six months ago so she should have moved out four months ago we're gonna have to leave today you get a kid living here you're telling us where we're gonna go how many children are here yeah two two how old is the small one seven seven with children inside it's not good news it puts an entirely different complexion on this job when there's children involved, it's more distressing because the children absolutely have no idea what we are. We're just coming in and taking them out, taking them out of their home. Only the council can help. It's a high court repossession order, so it's yeah. You got to call the council at this point. Emergency housing got to be got to do got to be something like you know, as an adult man who's who who just moved to another city, another state. Um, a lot has been going on. Y'all know I had to delete 3,000 videos. Y'all know what that did to the income. And if you don't know, it basically deleted all the income that I had from YouTube. So, with that being said, man, I know some times be getting tough, my boy. But at the same time, it's like, at the same time, I'm a grown-ass man. And these people are adults. They got to be something else that you're getting money for them. You gotta be getting money several different ways, man. You can't count, I can't count on just YouTube to pay me. You know what I'm saying? That's how you gotta have several streams, man. It's tough. It's immediate. They've had plenty of warning, but what I am concerned is when the mother gets home here and we are waiting for her, is that we're gonna, we have no choice on the eviction aspect, is we wanted to make contact with you early so that we can put into motion whatever emergency housing arrangements you have in these circumstances 
Minutes later, Steve returns to the house. Despite the children inside, it's the final warning. We've actually spoken to the council and yeah. the eviction is actually going to take place today. So what you really would be a really, really good idea is if you could get, get some clothes and things together for the kids for a couple of days until, until it can be sorted out. I can't do that. It's not my house. No. It's not my house. If you can't wait, you're going to wait for her. She's going to come and we're going to do it. Bye. Yeah, but we can't wait two or three hours. No, I can't. I can't let you in, man. It's a freezing cold night and there are two children in the house and they're going to creep away and sleep in a cardboard box for the night. That's probably not the best idea. It's early nice. evening in the week before Christmas. High Court enforcement officers Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are dealing with a problematic house repossession in London's East End. You would not be told about us. Even have a letter saying that we need to leave. The family who live here should have left six months ago when their tenancy expired. How old is the small one? Seven. Seven. There's children inside, and their mother, who's the main tenant, still hasn't turned up. But the eviction is going to happen. She contacted you. Yeah, she contacted me. She said she's on her way. She's but she's going to be about two or three hours. One no two. good. So you can just wait. It, listen, it's it's really quite simple. Yeah. And if I can okay. like, give you the bad news, yeah. is that within half an hour, we will call the police. If we have to, we'll break into the property and it'll upset the children and all the things that go with it. But the eviction will take place. With every passing minute, it's more difficult to evict the family tonight as planned. They'll have nowhere to go. The sheriffs need to act fast. Paul and Steve start their paperwork but the family are still inside and have bolted the front door. Can you open up? You can bolt all you want. <laughs> they got little toys and gadgets in the trunk. We learned that last episode, dude. Could you open the door for us, please? Pardon? Yeah, great. That's great. What's he say? He's called the police. That's good. We don't have a problem with that. Paul calls the relatives bluff and phones the police himself. The occupants are aware of why we're here. We've been in touch with the council and sent them an email of the High Court warrant that we hold. The people who are in the house are not giving us access. He said he's called the police, which is why I'm making this call. We're gonna do the eviction now. We've told the council they're aware of all of that. Fronting your move, acting like you called the police. They was being very patient with you. Now they on your ass. <clears throat> and they're going to sort out emergency accommodation for them. So we've done as much as we want to do, and we just want to be packed up and gone. OK, that's a, your star. Thank you very much. Okay, Bye. Very much. I can't even blame dude that's at the door, though. All he's doing is following directions from who, whoever else it is. OK, they're too busy to come. If you don't open the door, We'll smash the glass. You haven't called the police, we have. So, we're gonna break the glass. Just open the door. I've called the police and they said they've got no record of your call. I'm gonna give you two minutes and break the glass. It is the last straw, yeah, so we'll break in now. And I don't like to do that with kids in the house, but there's no option. Talking the family out has failed. Brute force is now the only choice. I'm sorry, but... Yeah, you're sorry, but... It's nothing against the witnesses, I know. If you'd have done as we'd yeah. asked, this would have all been totally unnecessary. The use of a crowbar has secured the sheriff's entry. They change the locks and begin the repossession of the property. Half an hour later, the female tenant they've been waiting for comes home. Sorry, we have a high court warrant. I've not received nothing. Pardon? I've not received nothing. What can I do now? This has been going on for months. No! I'm Give sorry. Me the letter. 
Right, well, that's dated the 3rd of December, to give to give possession of the house on or before the 11th of December. I received December. a letter 14. But you didn't go to court? I said I received a letter Saturday. Well, I'm sorry, I don't make the laws, I only enforce them. The landlord's agent has also arrived at the property. You guys had fair warning sorry? about this. You knew about this. You guys didn't respect the notices that we gave no, you. No, I said to you, no, don't talk about no, nothing don't because raise your voice we, never, we never receive any notice. Any notice. If I do, we we hand-delivered the notice. When? And? To, to you. We've never been to court. Yeah. Can I stop you there? This is wasting time. Right. It don't matter. Once the high court people is there, it's over. There's no if, ands, or buts. You got to go, unfortunately. <clears throat> Six months of notice is crazy. Like <clears throat> With the mounting pressure. I get it, though, man. That's a single mom in the crib. Like, there's no man around. I'm not saying that women can't get it done, but, like, when, a, when pressure amounts like that, man, it... it, it Something gotta be done. Like, that's man. Something gotta be done. To leave, the tenants give in. No choice. It's taken the sheriffs four hours to get them out. As there are children, the family will receive emergency council accommodation. It's now well into the night, but the eviction. Is finally over. If you, uh, if you're honest, they had nice furniture. There was a massive 60 inch TV in the lounge, another 60 inch TV in the conservatory. Then just the one bedroom on the ground floor had another massive TV as well mounted to the wall. And it didn't seem that these people were struggling financially at all. It seemed that they really lived a, a, a good life in there, considering that they couldn't afford to pay their rent. Getting the rent arrears was not on the sheriff's high court writ. And even though they owe money, the family will still be allowed to collect their remaining possessions within seven days. Okay, done and dusted, at last. But this job has affected Paul more than most. We've put a, an immigrant family out on the streets two or three days before Christmas. They hadn't even got their Christmas tree up, so there'd be no presents, nowhere to go, pissing down with rain. They're really unhappy. How can that be a good result? I feel that. Everything I said, I, I understand. I, I was being on you all side because y'all got a job to do. It is what it is. But I was definitely thinking that, like, hey, Christmas is raining. The number of families living in emergency B and B accommodations last autumn was the highest for a decade. An estimated seven million people use high cost credit in order to cover income shortfalls or meet unexpected expenditures. Many low income households have no savings, borrowing against their assets to cope. As more and more people get into debt. It's not just homes that are at risk of repossession. Our cars are valuable targets too, and they're even easier to seize. Mike Allenby and Terry Jones are the men who repossess your motor when the finance company want their money back. I definitely think there was a TikTok page or Instagram page who had these up, but I remember this. You repost, and you'll be blocked out already. Got a couple of new ones in Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. They reclaim cars across the northwest of England. When times are good, they recover up to six motors a day, six days a week. Good chance this will be here now, Liz. Yeah. I like. This morning, they're en route to repossess a people carrier that's been used as security on a loan. The debtor has missed repayments and is now hundreds of pounds in arrears. The difficulty with these yeah. sort of jobs, especially when the asset is a vehicle, the vehicle is used every day. Yeah. They've got to work like everybody else, so you've only got like a window of opportunity, haven't you? Yeah. A lot of people work during the day, but they get up early and they go to work in the car. So obviously we have to get up before they do, get to the, get to the property, try and find the car before they head off. Hey, there it is. That's it. Oh, come on. 
looking for the whip to go to work, and they gonna be like, dang. That's so I'd rather you just come pick it up after work. <laughs> oh, they still knock on the door. Okay, I forgot. Hey, love, I've got a repossession order for the vehicle. Did you okay? I just came out of hospital yesterday. Have you? Yeah, he's going to check to confirm them later. Well, not while we're here, there isn't, love. I've got three options. Yeah. You can either make a payment, which if you knocked on my door this time in the morning, I couldn't do. Yeah. Um, two, I can take the car and put it in our pound and give you a couple of days to sort it out. Or if you refuse to, I've just got to take the car down. Oh, I need my car to take the kids to school. I've been in hospital for the past month and came out yesterday. The only money I've got on me is 20 pound cash. No. So what am I gonna do It's seven o'clock in the morning? <sighs> If there was any other way I could help you, I would, though. Right, if I, if I give you the keys... Yes? I something, how do I know I'm going to get the car back? I understand, love. I understand. If you give us the keys, I'll find out what the outstanding is and I'll put my contact details on it so you have a point of contact and a face you know. Can you come in a minute? No, I can... I tell you what... She trying to... What's she trying to do? You want to come in? What do you mean? If my colleague can come in with me, I will come in. It's not common practice to do that, but she was in a distressed state. We needed to make sure that she was OK. Are we OK? Yeah, I'm fine. It's all right. We've got kids ourselves, still. <gasps> Calm down, love. It's OK. It says repo, but it means... If you said to me now, Mike, here's five hundred pound, go away. I'd be gone. I I I, I promise I'll bring your car back, though. Okay. This particular time, there was um, small children, two babies, in the other room. She said, "Do you mind if I go and f feed the babies?" And she, she got the bottles and she went and fed the babies. It's not a problem at all. You know, not there to be horrible. First thing you need to do is ring them up at nine o'clock, yeah. explain the situation, make sure you explain the situation properly to them. That's the nicest thing anyone's said. <laughs> Look, I've been where you are, though. I really have. I know exactly what it feels like to be in debt. Yeah, he told us last episode, man. Speaking of the blueprint, man, we just locked in. I don't know if y'all know who uh, Annoying TV is. Annoying TV he'll be on and Silky will be on. It's pretty elite. Anyway, back to this. It's just not a nice place to be. You've you've no idea. You dread letters coming through the door. You dread knocks on the door. I mean, I was... Uh, when I lost everything, I was in a hell of a place. You've got my number, All right, okay? If you have any difficulties, you give me a call, okay? And I'll sort it out. All right, thank you. Okay. Cheers. The only way you can sort it out for me is if you hand the cash over for me. As well. My bad. The car will be stored overnight while the owner tries to find the cash to pay. But for now, she'll need another way to get the kids to school. Not very often we see enough distressed, is it? It's not nice, is it, mate? It's not very nice, that's why you try and do it as pleasantly as possible. You just feel like giving him a big hug, don't you? And saying, don't worry, love, it's gonna be all right. Sometimes I could do with the hug as well. Not a few, though. Hey, you couldn't afford my hugs, mate. <laughs> <laughs> if I won the lottery, I'd still do this job. I really would. I would take the car and then hand them a set of keys there you go, mate. There's a new car for you. It's the following day. The owner of the car hasn't called. I was hoping to take the vehicle back, but the instruction from the uh, finance company is that it's got to go to auction. Something just don't sit right with me when I see somebody with a bulletproof vest and short sleeves. 
It's like, are you really trying to be safe or not? Yeah, finance That's company. What it like. It's that it's got to go to auction. Of course, I'd have preferred to take the car back to her, but at the end of the day, our job is to f find the assets that people are putting up for loans and resolving the situation. In a few days, it will go under the auction hammer. Unless the owner acts fast, it'll be the last she sees of it. Back in the southeast, Paul and Steve's next job is taking them to Essex. Me personally, I don't think she wanted the car. I think she was gonna try to do what she just did, like what she just did, try and get a car right there on the spot. And after that, that's it. They have a warrant to reclaim rent arrears from a father and son who are the tenants of a country house. They both signed the tenancy agreement in 2012. But they haven't paid rent for over a year. The High Court paperwork shows they now owe over £10,000 to the landlord. The sheriff's job today... Over 10? Wait, what? ...for a year. But they haven't paid rent for over a year. Oh, yeah. Over a year, it's over. Florida got, if you miss, if you miss rent, if you one day late, they're given 30 days to pay. They start early. They don't play. Because this is Scam County. This is, the, this is the scam capital of the world. You're not doing that in Florida. The High Court paperwork shows they now owe over £10,000 to the landlord. The sheriff's crazy. job today is clear cut. They need to locate any possessions owned by the tenants. If they can find them, they can sell them. Once sold, any money they make will be put towards the arrears owed to the landlord. There's a warrant here for £10,600. So what we're looking for is vehicles, antiques, paintings, things like that. But first, they have to get in. Legally on this type... So they just straight up legally robbing them. ...of High Court warrant, they can only gain access through an open door or window. Uh -huh. And in this business, preparation is everything. This is a, a scaling ladder. So they can't force entry, it gotta be open. There you go, open window. Their looks in, but their payday depends on finding the tenant's valuable possessions. Hello. Figures based on court proceedings have revealed the extent of England's housing crisis. A report from the housing charity Shelter suggests that across the country, one in every 105 homes is at risk of repossession. High Court Enforcement Officers Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner have a warrant to recover rent arrears from the tenants of a country house in Essex. There you go. Open window. They've got in, but no one's home. Hello. They're now on the hunt for possessions to seize and sell. If they can find enough goods... Boy, it's bare in there. <laughs> <laughs> like they just moved in that joint. They might be able to clear the debt of over £10,000 owed to the landlord. Piano? Oh, yeah. The state of the rooms tell their own story. The beds are all stripped. Bits are broken down. They've moved out, haven't they? Yeah, they're gone. Uh, there are signs of bits and pieces. But <laughs> I don't know if this was to ward us off or not, but... You did say in Essex there were people with guns and things. <laughs> with such a large property to hide valuables, Paul and Steve are having to search every square inch of the building. If they can't find what they're looking for, they won't earn a penny from this trip. The way that we make money from this job is purely we paid a commission on the sums of money that we recover. 
I had a very similar one to this in my uh, workshop toilet about 30 years ago, and that wasn't worth anything either. Nice enough piano. Ted, I think it's the... Uh, I think it's the landlord's, but I know how it's supposed to look, but I can't never get a sound out that makes any significance. Their search is proving fruitless. There's nothing of major value in the main property, but within the extensive grounds is an outhouse. Just found myself a boys' playground. The gentlemen's toys. Oh, yeah, you lit now. A little four-wheel quad and a 4 b four off-the-road buggy. We'll all add up to make some substantial money towards what is outstanding. The boys' toys are loaded into the van, but their value won't scratch the surface of the arrears. Hang on a second. Minor adjustments. Big adjustments. <laughs> There's nothing here of anything like the value to produce a response for the landlord's debt. Don't want a trampoline, do you? No. This has not been a good day. With the clear out done, it's the first chance for Carl, the landlord, to see the state of his property. He bought the house 10 years ago as an investment and relies on the rental income. It takes between five and a half and six months to get a tenant out while you are suffering financial loss and not getting paid rent, which you need. And uh, therefore you have to borrow money yourself to tide you over this period. When these people were living here, they- a nice house, I ain't gonna lie. Like, it just needs some paint and some upgrading, but like, overall, They had absolutely no respect for this house or for any of the items in it. Ah, oh. so they've painted, they've painted the room black. <laughs> I am a struggling landlord who needs the rental income. I'm head down and, and plowing on, you know, that's all I can do. Back on the road, the sheriffs plan to track down the missing tenants. It's their only chance of getting the rest of Carl's money back and getting paid themselves. Is that where they shot people just do nothing? Samaritans have seen a marked increase in the number of calls answered from men about financial worries. Their survey says that one in six men who called the organisation last year had money problems. That's up 7% on the figures for 2012. Hey, do me a favour, hit that like button, don't forget, man. Also, do me a favour when this is over. Go lock in with this one. In the northwest, car repossession experts Mike Allenby and Terry Jones are driving through Liverpool. They're attempting to recover an expensive motor. What is season one based in Liverpool? It's a Jaguar X-Type. A brand new one has a list price of over £30,000. But no matter how high spec your car, the same rules of repossession apply. If you don't pay, Mike and Terry can take it away. It's even more embarrassing when you got an expensive car getting repo. Like, you was out here capping that hard. <laughs> your cap was over cappy. You need to reduce your caption. You feel me? Most expensive car we've repossessed, I would say a Bentley Continental, uh, Aston Martin, uh, Maserati. The Jack has a return of goods order on it. It means the owner has defaulted on his repayments and the finance company wants it back. For once, the address they've been given has come up trumps straight away. This doesn't move for a while. Never ever have I seen one of these in my life. Didn't even know Jaguar made a station wagon. Well, has it? No, it hasn't moved for about a year. Rubbish around the wheels, the cobwebs on the handles, the inside of the car, it's just not moved for any length of time at all. It's a common situation. Expensive motors mean expensive repairs, and some owners simply give up. It's a catch-22. 
they can't afford to fix the car or they can't afford to, or they can't afford to make the payments and if it's a bit of both then the best thing to do is phone up the finance company and explain the situation I would have been getting that back Even with no response, the team can legally take the car as long as the finance company gives permission. But there's a problem. Oh, hi, Trace. We've got the Jaguar, but some of these X-types are all-wheel drive, and we can't tow it if it's all-wheel drive, not even on a suspended lift, so we'll have to get recovery out. Because if we try and tow it, it'll damage the gearbox. Mike knocks again. He's convinced someone's home. There's somebody in, because there's a little dog barking now. I just find it's... If, if it's just been sitting there, just give it to him. Y'all tweaking. I wonder if it's like, um, so here when you get your car repo, they sell it, wherever they sell it, and then they take the, the sale price and put it towards how much you owe it, and then they send you the bill for the rest of it. I wonder if it's like that up there too. Strange that the dog shuts up every now and then. People go to all sorts of lengths to avoid the debts. I mean, I've had people that pretend they're not in, and you can sit outside the house, and I've sat there for hours on end, and then the next thing, all of a sudden, somebody will come to the door, and then five people will walk out of the house. I've had people hide their cars in neighbours' garages. It's unbelievable the lengths people will go to avoid confronting their debts. The plan to repossess the car rests on the arrival of a low loader. The team believe it will force the person hiding in the property to come out, so the job can be wrapped up. If they come to the door, they give us the keys, we just go here and gone. Because the last thing you want to do is um, cause anybody an embarrassment or anything like that. An hour and a half later, the low loader turns up. Scene with a loader, like. Sure enough, someone appears at the front door. Hey, boy. You can sign for it. Is that okay? Yeah, of course it's okay. It's your stuff, mate. Right. Yeah, not, not an issue at all. Take out whatever you need. Um, I've got uh, the son of this uh, client to answer the door now. Um, he's quite happy for us to take the vehicle. He's aware of the situation. So he's just asked if he can empty the car. All right, mate. Cheers. Thanks for your help. It's all right. Oh, oh, this has been moved for a while. One down, 59 to go. <laughs> Two hours. He made it work for that. The Jag was later taken to auction to be sold. Back in London, Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are hunting for some of the dozens of debtors facing high court writs and warrants. Where is he? I don't know. I think he's on holiday somewhere. I just live upstairs and I just did a cleaning. You sure you're not? But there's one case they can't let go. They're still after the tenants from the Essex mansion. The debt has now risen to over £12,000 with added high court fees. Well, it's as bad as it gets, really. The father is in prison, convicted of fraud and obtaining property by deception. He's been jailed for... Oh, well, yeah. There it is. <laughs> ...for three years. But his son is also named on the warrant. He's now the sheriff's only hope of recovering the money and getting paid. Tracking him down is proving difficult. Hello? Despite many calls, there's no answer. But Paul thinks he knows why. He's hoping a different phone with a different number will do the trick. Oldest trick in the book. Hello? Idiot. <laughs> Got him. Hello, it's uh, Paul Bowhill. Hello, fella. Is there any possibility of you coming up to the house now? No, I can't. OK, that's lovely. Right. Th thanks yeah. very much. Thank Take care. Bye. Bye. Sounds quite chipper, doesn't it? 
doesn't know what's waiting for him, though, because I intend to serve him with a statutory demand, which is a forerunner to bankruptcy in this case, to say, well, if you don't pay the £12,000 you owe the landlord in this case, <clears throat> we intend to bankrupt you. That man just basically said, you can be petty and not make me, make me call you a thousand times? Okay, bet. Now you're going to be bankrupt. <laughs> We're taking everything. It's been a month since their initial visit to Essex, and the sheriffs are heading back for their first encounter with the son. But it's not just Paul and Steve who are after him. The landlord's called the police. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you, sir. We are going to effect an arrest of the gentleman. OK. Uh, take him to Braintree Police Station. Right. To answer an allegation of alleged theft from the premises, right. which has been received by the owner. So we really need to serve our papers before they serve theirs. Can you get them out of the van? Yeah. The son is on site, holed up in a neighbour's house. The police are keeping the driveway covered in case he makes a run for it. It's taken weeks, but finally, Paul and the son come face to face. It's me. Hello, sir. How are you? Paul. It's all right. I'm sorry about this. No, no, do you want to come yeah, in? Yeah, Yeah. Inside, he explains why they've been so keen to catch up with him. He would want to pursue you to the verge of bankruptcy. This is the start of, like, the end of the nightmare, if you like. Yeah. But the son has his own version of events. I was never actually on, if you like. Yeah. But Every time I see this... It just shocks me that y'all still get milk delivered. But the son has his own version of events. I was never actually on the agreement, the rental agreement. Well, I've got the paperwork, so. I'll show you. Despite all Paul's documents being in order, he is refusing to pay up. But he's wobbling a bit now, isn't he? Sorry? He's wobbling a bit now. The sheriffs are left with no option but to serve the bankruptcy papers. Steve? Yeah, can you just... This is Steve, my wingman. Hey, Steve. Hey. Um, how can you back The police are here and they might well, like, arrest you and take you away. Can you very kindly ask yeah. that I see them um, around the back? Yes. Yeah? I'll if, ask if, them to come if, if they, yeah. if they You're not going to run away, are you? I'm just... still a bit pissed from last night, so I don't think I can run anywhere without falling over, if I'm honest. The police finally move in to arrest the son for the alleged theft. They've got their man, but for now, Paul and Steve are leaving empty-handed. We don't earn anything out of this job because it's purely commission-based. So it's a waste of a day to us, but it doesn't matter, we've still wrapped it up. We've done what we can do, so if on my tombstone it says we did what we could, that's really, that tells the whole story. They not get anything from the bankruptcy at all or nothing? You think you'll have enough money for a tombstone? <laughs> no. <laughs> but I could get one on a credit card before I die. <laughs> <laughs> It's another day, and Paul and Steve are swapping the city streets of London for Somerset. It's a long way from their usual patch, it must not be dangerous in Somerset. Bro had on a Nike sweater, dude had on a button-up. But three jobs have come up in the same... Short sleeve button-up. ...town. Heading off to the west in the sunshine. Well, maybe not the sunshine, but still heading west. Getting results for all three could make it a big payday. Happy days. But they've no idea if the gamble will be worth it. Enforcement officers Paul and Steve have travelled to Somerset armed with three High Court warrants. Today, they could end up collecting thousands of pounds worth of possessions from multiple debtors. The first job is to recover valuables from a man who owes over £16,000 to a firm of solicitors. He's offered to pay the money back in instalments, but they've turned him down. Instead, 
They want his possessions seized and sold. Ugh. He must have gave them a hard time because they're not trying to hear none of that. They said, we, nah, we just take everything from you. Hey, oh, Betty. what last? The amount we're pursuing today is 16 and a half thousand pounds. Inevitably, when we get there, he will tell us his tale of woe. But behind every tough response, there's also understanding. I have had financial problems years ago, um, which were my own fault. Really, with a business, I didn't keep my eye on it. Having been in the position myself, I now understand how people get into debt, whereas before, I didn't. On an occasion like this, we won't actually leave a letter because it might spook them. We'll just come back later. A car is parked on the driveway. If it's the debtors, Paul and Steve can seize and sell it. I've photographed the car. You have? Yeah. I mean, that car's probably worth less than a grand, so... Yeah. It's not going to knock the spots off this. So we'll come back. Okay. With over £16,000... Well, Would have took it anyway. ...to recover. The sheriffs need to talk to the debtor and find some substantial assets. Otherwise, they'll face another day without pay. While they wait, they have other debts to chase in the local area. You're trying to track down. That was his personal mobile number. Steve is now looking for him on Facebook. If they get what they're after, they could recover over £30,000 of debt. We're from the High Court in London. We're trying to enforce a warrant. But so far, the Somerset trip is looking like a non-starter. Oh, it's been a long day again, isn't it, really? Yeah. Seven-hour journey from London to Bridgewater. Got to walk quicker. Oh, yeah. Before they head home, there's one... ...one last chance to get paid. They're returning to the debtor. Oh, it's another car there too. Who owes over sixteen thousand pounds to a firm of solicitors? Looks like the television's on. Hello. 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 Um, I'm a high court enforcement officer, and I wonder when we could have a speak with him. He's not actually here. He's working away. He's working away. Yeah. That's his number. Okay. Lovely. All right. When will he be home? December. We've had some quite hilarious circumstances where people converse through letterboxes and where we've fed paperwork in and out through letterboxes um, and had some really unconstructive uh, conversations. Uh, hi there, my name's Steve Pinner. I'm a High Court Enforcement Officer. Um, I've just, just spoken to your wife at home uh, and um, the bottom line is I have a writ the money's outstanding against you. Yeah. Can you pay it? No, not at all. I made them an offer and they rejected it. So then I went down the route of declaring myself um, bankrupt, which I didn't bother doing because I was open they were going to seek common sense. And we had a solicitor in Manchester deal with it, which in the morning I will be getting on to them, which you will probably then get a phone call telling you a date of when I'm going to court to claim myself bankrupt. There are two views on people who go bankrupt. Those who are forced into it and those who do it for the sheer hell of it. Those that scam, rip off people. So I don't have a very high opinion of those. But obviously the ones that are actually unfortunate enough to have been made bankrupt through what could be a mistake on their behalf on the way they lived or worked. You know, you've got to feel sorry for them. So. You haven't declared yourself bankrupt as yet? No. Uh, OK. If the man declares himself bankrupt, there'll be no payout for the sheriffs. They need to seize any assets they can right now. <laughs> you better get to it, my boy. But his wife won't let them in, and they can't break in. Their last hope is the car. I'm going to seize the car in front of the drive as part payment towards this debt. It, I didn't buy it. It was bought by my wife. OK. Can I just ask you to contact your wife and ask her if she wouldn't mind just showing me the proofs? I'm quite happy to accept that if that is the case. 
Yeah. Oh, uh, okay, could you call your wife? Thank you. She's got two choices on that. You okay. know, we'll either get a recovery truck out, smash the window, get it on the truck, you know, the usual story, really. You enjoy your job? It's a job I do. Yeah. <laughs> Here they go. And you sleep well at night? OK. Yeah. This is a piece of paper. It says that car belongs to me. <laughs> Any good or no? OK. All right. I do understand that your husband has spoken to the solicitors, but you must understand from our point that it's obviously been through the courts and they decided, in their wisdom, against your husband. So that's why we're instructed to come and collect. Oh, what a job. How do I become an officer like you? Because it sounds a wonderful job. Do you, yeah. know, do you know what I say? There's like different forms of scum in life, but you're just a higher class one. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> the pond scum, that really, I don't know why that really upset me. I've never been called pond scum in my life before. You must understand from our point of view that somebody is owed a debt. It's only words and, you know, they're angry, so you just let them get on with it. She was politely rude. <laughs> Hello. Have you talked to my wife? She proved the car was hers. That's fine. I accept that. Yeah. When you get your bankruptcy papers, yeah. give me a call and send yeah. me a copy of the papers. If you do that, you might not see me again. Or well, you haven't seen me yet, I know, but your wife might not see me again. Oh, uh, So, do we agree on that? Yeah. All right, then. Thank you very much for the call. Bye. 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 Oh, they're also recording a phone call, too. It's pretty smart. When you don't get paid for a job, it's disheartening because you may have travelled 100 miles to go somewhere, knock on somebody's door, and there's nothing there. So if you don't get paid, the job, you don't get pointless. anything. It's, it's either pointless. A get paid or don't get paid. Say it, it's pointless. You've wasted 12 hours, 14, 15 hours. The East End House has new tenants. The ex-tenant still on 3K. The owner of the, the people carrier paid up and got her car back. Salute. That's good stuff. The landlord of the mansion is still pursuing his ex-tenants for rent arrears. Or See you, Lily. Like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm good. Until next time.